Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play the Journeyman Project 3, Legacy of Time. Welcome to the Mediterranean Sea, in this island that we've apparently been dropped off from. This windmill... Things are not looking good here, actually. It looks pretty trashed. What happened here? First off, before we actually get started, take a look at this user interface. A great improvement over the last two games. First off, 360 degree panoramic view of everything. No longer arrow keys moving around areas. So now we can see barnacles. It's great. Also, we get to see different er areas of the user interface, such as the disguise. Unfortunately, we don't get Daunton here. We don't get to use Will in our adventures. We have our translator biochip over here. Good old Samco. And over here, nothing is in it so far, but it is our inventory. And of course, our drop down menu. This 360 degree camera has such a great feel of freedom almost, except it's not really that free because you're able to pan around the camera all you want, but you have to find a specific path that you're able to go up to, which is noted by these arrows. Arrows are either going to be one arrow or two arrow, and these denote kind of the amount of distance that you're going to be traveling at some points, but it's not as consistent as you might think it is. And I don't want to be around this place because it looks like an eclipse is just about to happen, and I don't want to be here when that happens. Hello? Agent 3 suit. Does that... Well, she left it here. We know that. Gage doesn't know that. Does that mean she's still on this little island? Hmm. Gage, remember the smooth, sultry voice? It's me, Arthur! The Robin to your Batman, the Jekyll to your... Uh, heckle, the thing to your thing. Why the long face? You remember me, right? Dimples! Remember the... Uh, from your blank stare, I would say that you don't. Oh well, I'm not hurt. But if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a look around and make myself at home. Uh, uh, while I'm checking things out, I have a message from your pen pal. Agent 3? Yes, Miss Joy. She left it for whoever found the suit. My jumpsuit's the cause of the distortion wave. Once Arthur sends it to the TSA, the crisis will be over. I know everyone believes I'm a traitor, and I can't change that now. But what I have discovered is so incredible that I'm willing to turn myself in. But I can't risk being imprisoned before my discovery is investigated. So, you will follow my trail and see what I have seen. I have hidden three pieces of a time code that will lead you right to me. The first code piece is hidden in this environment, not far from here. Arthur has the coordinates for the other two time zones. You will soon figure out why I placed the codes where I did. In two of the environments, you want to go to the highest vantage point, but in the other, go to the lowest. I implore you, keep your eyes and your mind open, and remember that your first duty is to history. The good news is, I know why you don't know me. The bad news is, you were mind-wiped. Two months ago, you were taken from the past to help save your neck in the future. Together, we stopped Agent 3's plot to frame you. But I got zapped into the time stream with her in the process. Once your name was cleared, the TSA sent you back to your own time without any memory of the adventure, so you don't remember me. But we're back now. Together, we'll find Agent 3 and bring her back alive. Oh, this will be more exciting than a pair of pants full of geckos. Just like before, I'll display icons for you to talk with me. If I have a comment, the thought icon will illuminate. If you want my sage advice, check the light bulb and see if I have any help. 
Oh, and I took the liberty of moving into the old translator biochip. So, I'll be your universal translator now. The new coordinates are in your jump menu. Lead on, Gage. And so Arthur returns. He's looking better than he did in the last game. He's no longer a brain. He has eyeballs. And dons our helmet, apparently. We can click on Arthur if we want to hear the previous thing that he mentioned. For instance, there's a thought bubble over here, which means that it's pretty much a comment like in the last game. According to history, this uncharted island never existed. However, we are relatively close to Thera, an island that erupted in a huge volcanic explosion a few hundred years ago. The crater it left became the island of Santorini. Wait a minute, isn't... Isn't Thera an actual island and... Shouldn't that be the other way around? Because I thought Thera was originally known as Santorini. But then its name changed to Thera. Hmm... The destruction of Thera had far-reaching consequences. From about 1950 to 1450 BC, the Minoans of Crete ruled the Mediterranean during the golden age of their civilization. When Thera erupted around 1450 BC, volcanic ash from 70 miles away covered Crete, while tidal waves flooded the island cities, wiping out the great Minoan nation. It was later proposed by archaeologists that the lost continent of Atlantis could have shared the same fate. Atlantis, ooh. Well, I'm sure that we won't be able to figure out whether or not Atlantis is around here or not. But, as you can see, with the 360 panoramic camera view, sometimes Arthur has some things to say depending on what direction you actually look. Don't look now, but that broken windmill is staring you down. You're no Don Quixote, but I think you can take it. So for the purposes of this playthrough, I will be trying to get as many of the comments and light bulb messages as possible, which does mean that I'll be going back and forth between areas, just trying to see where Arthur has things to say. For instance, back on this plank wood, my only friend, you can look at the windmill here and, well, he does have something to say here. Before I, uh, cleverly ditched that annoying Agent 3, I did see some of this island. I recognize that windmill. Maybe if we explore more, we can figure out what the dickens is going on. You can also move in between screens while Arthur still speaks, which is also a nice feature. So make sure to pretty much look in every single degree just to make sure that Ar you know that Arthur has spoken about everything that can be said. Alright, so, need to look for time codes, the highest place in two locations and the lowest in one location. wonder what location this would be. Hmm. This doesn't look right. At all. That building was not dilapidated from natural erosion. I would say that it looks freshly smashed. Hmm. Who would have it in for a windmill? I have a hunch that what we're looking for is somewhere in this windmill. Let's go through that gaping hole. Yeah, let's do that. Light bulbs, of course, are like the hints from the last game. However, well... Hints do not actually penalize you in any way compared to the last two games. There's no actual scoring system in this one. Clean up aisle two! No kidding! You wanna say that again? Clean up aisle two! Thank you, Arthur! Alright. So, well, this doesn't look very great. Um, what do we have? We had stairs. Thank you, Hole, for not being a thing, for being a thing that's in my way. Uh, what can we do here, Arthur? If we overcome these stairs, we could get to the top of the windmill and have a nice view of this entire island. But I don't see any other way to go up other than those broken stairs. Maybe if I threw your legs over that bottom step and climbed up your spine... God, I wish I had a body. In order to get to the top of the windmill, we need to find a way to get up to that bottom step. Something like a rope would do the trick. There seems to be quite a bit of junk around this island. Let's look around. Maybe we could find some useful junk to help us get up those stairs. 
Alright, well that gives us some sort of direction in order to go. Maybe there's something around here. Maybe. You know, if I could actually travel around the windmill, maybe I'll find something on the ground. Or not. Hmm. Nope, just bricks and dirt and other things. It's going to be somewhere around the island. Let's see, 1262 BC in the Mediterranean. We're close to Thera, which means that we're somewhere in the southern Cyclades Islands in the Aegean. Which is kind of close to Crete, which is what Arthur was talking about with the Minoan civilization. However, this island is apparently uncharted? Which is kind of odd. Can you say anything more about the windmill? Agent 3 said two of the time codes would be found at locations with high vantage points. Well, that windmill is the tallest thing still standing around here. Hmm. Well, it's as good a place as any. We have to try and get up there just to be able to look around the island. Or at least what's left of it. Yeah, I think the game kind of missed a chance in order to actually have Daunton be just a disguise for places such as this. The first part of the game is pretty much just an overall... It has these kinds of settings, especially the other locations that we have to find time codes with. It wouldn't have bothered, really, the game to have a Daunton thing so we could be like the adventures of William Daunton in time and space. I don't know. It's a weird idea. That derelict boat seems to be in a hurry to leave the island. Hold on, there's somebody on that boat. He looks familiar. Call me Time Space Happy, but I swear that's Dr. Elliot Sinclair. The scientist who invented time travel. The guy you put away for 10 to 20 at Vega Thalon. He could be Sinclair's distant cousin. You know what that means. Baldness is hereditary. All right. If we want to look at him again, we're able to just use the zoom in icon in order to look at him again. Time for some hypotheses, I guess. Is he what Arthur says and he's a close distant cousin? Or that could possibly be Sinclair himself. He is the father of time travel after all, so he could definitely get here. But we really don't have anything to go off of. Plus he kind of has hair. I don't know if that's a wig or not. What am I standing on here? It looks... Hmm. Well, I can kind of look further into what used to be the city? I have a feeling this looks like, like a piece of a wall. Hello. What could you be? That rope ladder is like one of your modern ladders in many respects, only more rope-like. Perfect. That's not driftwood. It does look like it once belonged on that ship out there. It appears to be in pretty good shape. I think the rope ladder would go very well with your inventory. I think so too. What? You're going to leave the owner a note? You're on a deserted island! Gage, take the rope! I was... I'm a courteous man, okay? Let's take the rope. And that is our first item in our inventory. If we want to look up stuff in our inventory, we just have to left-click, basically, on to the inventory space once. If we want to grab the item, we just click and hold and we're able to use it. This is something I actually don't enjoy about the UI system, is that there's too much emphasis on left clicking. You have a right click, and I wish that they kind of would have used it for opening up the inventory. And here is our analysis of the rope ladder. Made of twine and hoops for hand and handholds. Very handy for climbing purposes. Alright, at least now that we have this, we're able to head back to the windmill and probably do something about the stairs. We 
we go. The ominous music also does not help the situation, but I guess it kind of fits the destructive setting. If we only had some sort of climbing device. Rope ladder! Hmm. Let's see. Rhymes with Pope ladder? Wait. Arthur the All-Knowing is seeing a rope entwined in your future. I see a rope ladder, much like the one in your inventory. I see you hooking the rope ladder onto the broken stair. I see you climbing up the ladder. I see... Whoa. I see you have a tight bit of Josie. Um, what was that noise? Oh, well, I guess it was this, that step we had breaking off. Oh no, the stairs are wasted. My parents are gonna be pissed. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. Alright, well, we're up anyways. And almost hitting our head on this beam. Let's hurry. Let's see what we can see up the top of this windmill. It's an interesting windmill, though. The technology that drives this windmill is at least two centuries before its time. From what I can tell, power generated by the central shaft gets transferred to that diagonal shaft, leading me to believe that this windmill is actually a wind pump designed to move water. Why, I don't know. Interesting. Kind of like an aqueduct. Alright, up we are. We can go further, but let's see what we can see out of these windows. And by windows, I just mean open gaping holes in the wall. Not much. At least it's still a good view. Hmm. No way we're ever gonna have to fix that sail. Not with the condition that everything else is in. Alright. Let's get up to the top and see what we can see. This island isn't deserted, it's been attacked. Something destroyed the city's sea walls and flooded it. We are on the walls. If we look over here, similar windmills are also lining the walls of what used to be the city. There's a central area also over here, which looks kind of important, but of course everything's flooded. So we're, no way we're ever going to get over there. Huh. I doubt she would have written the code into anything permanent. She probably would have traced it in sand, dirt, maybe even human blood. A message she knew would not stay permanently. Keep looking. I'm sure it's right under your nose. Right under my nose, huh? Sure it's not in the clouds, Arthur? Well, if that's the case, she wanted to be in a temporary spot. She etch it into wood, or maybe that's sand over there, but this is what the time code piece looks like. And it is just a piece. So we have a little bit here, a little bit here, and over here. So there's some spots missing that can be filled up with extra coordinates. Well, let's go ahead and scan this thing, and next time. We're going to head over to the next part, in the next time period. We're going to go in chronological order, because that is the earliest one. So, we're going to go to the 5th, 6th century AD in the Andes Mountains next time. See you next time, everyone.